we'll be focusing today about a very very important topic of congenital hypothyroidism which is the most common form of neonatal endocrine disorder congenital hypothyroidism has the most profound impact it is definitely the most treatable and preventable form of mental retardation clinically we talked about you start with a family history of consanguinity and congenital hypothyroidism mother with hypothyroidism medications iodine exposure of all forms amiodarone becomes important look at association always look at cardiac association look at renal anomalies look at all the genital examination and hearing becomes important now from a perspective of diagnosis people talk a lot about scan but some people say scan is not going to make a huge difference but if you want to have a diagnosis scan is important now when should you do the scan manoj sir scan at the neonatal period scan is not important Uh, but uh, we have to start the treatment with prenatal thyroid or hypothyroidism test. Then we can stop. We can do uh, after three years. No, suppose you want to do in the beginning. You have the scan available. What is the best time to do it? So within seven days of starting thyroid surgery. Three days. Generally, more than TSH should be more than thirty. Twenty thirty, then you will be able to pick up on this scan. So scan ideally, if you want to do it, do it just at the right at the beginning. Otherwise, forget about it. So sight and function, you have two options: iodine and technetium. Which is better? Well, iodine is better. First of all, iodine one twenty three or iodine one thirty one. The one thirty one we can't use because of the high risk of radiation. Sure. We are using uh, iodine one twenty three, but because it 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 have benefit benefit beneficial effect on uh, organification, so we can see organification. Uh, and the technetium ninety nine we are preferring because of the it is late the late late time consuming. and uh, the result will be available in the uh, it is very very helpful 20 minutes you give the injection 20 minutes you will get the results iodine you have to wait for 2 hours and delayed scan for 24 hours not going to be very easy the only benefit if you are using iodine 123 is that you can do a perchlorate discharge test which hardly anybody does in that regards how does it make a difference whether you have a tpo defect or that treatment is the same so what you are looking at here is that do you have a gland or not is the gland taking up the thyroid or not this is what you are looking at basically so for that purpose technetium does a very very good role what are the precaution that you will advise the mother who is going for a technetium scan of the baby uh sir first uh, baby should be breastfed yes why uh, because uh, so that uh, 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 lingual or uh, salivary attack will be not there so when they are actually uh, feeding or have recently fed the salivary gland will contract so the other areas from which the iodine can go is mainly the salivary gland so that confusion will go off so always should be done after feeding in that regard so when as i said before treatment if the tsh is more than 30 so somebody is more than 600 you gave one or two days it doesn't matter otherwise one week no point after that doing that and as you said if you want to confirm later on you can do it after 3 years of stopping treatment in that setting so you can have a thyrosis which is completely absent gland you can have a ectopic thyroid you can have a hemigenesis or you can have a dishomogenesis which is a increased uptake scenario and you can identify on the scan perchlorate discharge test will not happen if you have a, a problem in the organification and that's what it will be important but it is not being done in that regards the so role is if you have so when should you do should everybody be done so i would say if somebody has more than 600 or something not much role if you have a borderline case 6 to 10 then you will get more information whether you i treat or not that will be relevant if it's a transient cause then you want to know you may be knowing and if you have a goiter plus again plus minus so if you have a goiter it means it's a dysomenogenesis anyway so a thyrosis basically would uh, basically mean that you can have certain situations like tsh receptor and nis situation or antibody in which you have a apparent athyrosis in which the gland is there but the scan is not picking up which we discussed earlier so in these situations you should do a ultrasound or a thyroglobin which is preferred so ultrasound because thyroglobin so thyroglobin again is not a very reliable one so generally we don't do thyroglobulin now in congenital hypothyroidism so ultrasound is important so if you are doing a scan always also keep a possibility of ultrasound along with that in that regards an ultrasound although is operator dependent it cannot identify ectopic gland it is good one to pick up the gland in situ so you will know that the gland is there 
and it should not be difficult because the gland is reasonably big in the newborn period should not have a problem if you're doing an ultrasound best to do a ultrasound doppler that will give you a better information in that regards thyroglobulin as i said is a marker of thyroid hormone production and a functional thyroid tissue but there are a lot of issues in terms of thyroglobulin assays because of antibodies so it's not very reliable if there is dysgenesis or tg deficiency it will be low it will be normal in the receptor defects and high in one of those conditions where your production is more like a tpo abnormality but no role routinely in terms of congenital hypothyroidism so if you now classify the disease if you have a ectopic on scan no issues it's ectopic if you find absent on scan and ultrasound is absent this is dysgenesis thyroglobulin will be undetectable if you have eutopic you can have a tsh antibody iodine excess tsh receptor defect and nis and then finally you can see increase uptake and large thyroid in any of the dyshormonogenesis picture like tpo pendred iodine deficiency and tg deficiency so if you use scan and ultrasound most cases your diagnosis will be done as i said the only condition in which you have a enlarged thyroid with a thyroglobulin being undetectable is a thyroglobulin deficiency but it won't make a huge difference in that regard how would you diagnose iodine deficiency dr pratik as we say the most common cause is iodine deficiency how so what will happen to the thyroid uptake in iodine deficiency increase uptake so increase uptake is dyshormonogenesis versus iodine deficiency so how would you differentiate you can look at the urinary iodine but that is not a good marker for a individual perspective so that's why most people won't be doing that in that setting so genetics not very very important if you having some confusion extra thyroid manifestation or a family history then you think about genetic evaluation in that perspective association look for hearing heart kidneys all those factors become important use tsh at day 3 ideally and remember that blood is half that of venous level if tsh is more than 40 do a ft4 consider treatment if tsh is less than 20 or 34 if 24 to 48 hours this will be 99.9% cases fine nothing to be done if it's 20 to 40 repeat after 14 days if it's more than 20 do a ft4 and treat if it's low if it's less than 10 nothing required 10 to 20 repeat after 21 days if it's more than 20 you require treatment 6 to 20 consider a scan and finally less than 6 no treatment so this is a overall strategy so age and specific criteria will be there rescreening if there is prematurity trisomy 21 same sex twin or hospitalization you should do a repeat screen now this is different how do you screen in a preterms so in preterms you do a tsh same tsh at day 2 to 4 If TSH is less than ten, what will you do, Sain? Nothing. Nothing. So I will know. I will repeat the screen after two. So you will repeat at two to four weeks, and if it's a very very preterm, do it at thirty-seven weeks again. So repeat the screen. Now, if it's more than ten milli units per liter, in this case, you do a FT four and TSH. If your FT four is low, and or TSH is more than ten, what will you do? Start. This is primary hypothyroidism. you will start treatment if your ft4 is normal and tsh is less than 10 you repeat it after the same mechanism if your ft4 is low tsh is less than 10 what does it mean so this will depend on the level of ft4 what do you mean by that so ft4 is low low is low and tsh is normal so this looks like central hypothyroidism so what will you do so other features of ft So you will see, okay, this is central versus non-thyroid illness. Ninety percent, it is non-thyroid illness. So you look at features of MPHD. Is there any midline defect? Is there micropenis? If there is hypoglycemia, cholestasis, if they are there, then you think of doing MRI and all those things and consider treatment. But if they are not there, what will you do? So start treatment more than ten. Yes, it is less than ten. so then you should do a ft4 using a equilibrium dialysis if it is also low there 
that again is a bit of a difficulty then you may consider doing an mri and treat but this is a area in which don't rush for treatment because isolated central hypothyroidism is very very rare so just to summarize if you have a preterm day 2 to 4 tsh is less than 10 repeat at 2 to 4 weeks and 37 weeks if it is more than 10 with or without and repeat also is more than 10 and ft4 is low or normal start treatment if your ft4 is low but your tsh is normal no features of mphd in that case you have to do a equilibrium dialysis ft4 if it is low treat otherwise you wait and watch. there is no harm if you wait for 2 3 weeks nothing is going to happen but if your ft4 is on the lower side tsh is less than 10 and you find that there is a issue in terms of features of mphd then you have to treat in that regard so i think this is something very important clear for everybody i hope now how do you approach somebody whom you have confirmed as a congenital hypothyroidism do a scan if it shows ectopic it's fine if it shows increased uptake it's dyshormonogenesis or iodine deficiency if it's absent do a thyroid ultrasound if ultrasound is absent it is agenesis if it's present do a trab antibody if mother has a clear cut history you may not do a trab antibody as well if it's positive it's maternal if it's negative it is nis or a tsh receptor d